Hello, and welcome back. Uh, this is the week before Brandenburg. Uh, I'm going to try to stream every time I practice, I guess. Uh, anything that is Brandenburg related, I mean. So I might not do all my warm ups every morning or whatever. But, uh, but today we are going to do a warm up. And uh, one that I devised a couple of days ago. Let's see, it was the 16th. Uh, today's the 21st. So uh, not quite a week ago. And uh, I didn't mean to do it. I was actually sort of just trying to make sure that I played all my different horns and things like that. And, uh, and I wrote it down. Luckily, I was using a timer and, and, uh, and doing some, some different kinds of playing. But I played, I wanted to just do Clark's. Uh, I did, uh, if you've been watching some of these streams, I, I did a whole uh, uh, a stream on playing scales in different ways, right? I think I still have that sheet out somewhere here. Might not be, I still definitely have all of the, yeah, here we go. Ways to play scales, right? Um, and we talked about doing the different diatonic chords and the different uh, chromatic chords in different inversions. We talked about doing it in thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, right? Um, the, the, we already said diatonic and fixed triads, right? But also seven chords, also nine chords, again in their inversions, pentatonics, right? That's, that's one way, and doing all that by ear, that's really, really, uh, I think an important thing to be able to do. But something that everyone is familiar with already is the Clark book, right? Uh, if you don't already know it, uh, the Clark Technical Studies is what you're what we're talking about. There's four Clark books. There's the Technical Studies, which we're gonna kind of work through. I, I didn't even actually bring the book in here. Uh, I'm just gonna do them from memory uh, and by ear again, because uh, I still think that's the most important part. But uh, we've also got the Elementary Studies, which is a really really good beginner book, but also um, for teachers. It's uh, if, even if you teach college and you don't ever really teach beginners. The language that he uses to to describe things and explain how trumpet works in the first uh, it's like 13 pages of the elementary studies is a really really valuable information that everybody should read. Um, oh, I've frozen myself again. Sorry about that. Uh, I knew this would happen as soon as I actually started doing anything, but luckily uh, the stream can continue in the dark, and I will keep restarting this. Uh, it generally doesn't work for, it works for shorter and shorter periods of time, but we shall see. Uh, so sorry if it goes in and out. Um, I'll, if it, if it's a problem, I'll just cut the stream short. But anyway, so, um, the Clark book, uh, the, the, let's see, the third Clark book is the characteristic studies. Oh, see, already done. Uh, <laughs> let's try, let's try some other things here. Um. I'm, I'm shutting everything down, as you can see. I use Cam Twist uh, and a thing called Camera Live, and I do them together. Uh, Cam Twist uh, is essentially the broadcasting software uh, that broadcasts to OBS, and Camera Live is essentially the interface that the camera can use through USB to connect with the computer as a live cam. So, um, unfortunately, it tends to get stuck, uh, and so I'm I'm trying to figure out what gets it stuck because sometimes it'll run all day just no problem, uh, and this was the case on the old computer as well. This is my laptop, so I can always just change it to the laptop computer and it'll work fine. But this is such a much nicer camera. So anyway, uh, and then the final book, uh, Clark book. Uh, this will this will freeze again because I'm going to start my start actually giving you new information is uh, the setting up drills. And setting up drills is basically how to warm up. And he has a lot of really important uh, explanations in there as well as some examples of essentially just two octave chromatic scales and arpeggios and scales and things like that that, that get you sort of warmed up. And actually, that's kind of what we're going to do today. Uh, but we're going to use the characteristic studies first. You can always look up setting up drills and do exactly what he says. And maybe we'll do a stream on that uh, sometime in the future. But right now, uh, why, why do I want to do this? Well, Brandenburg is Wednesday. Uh, today is Friday. So I've got, what is that? Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I've got five days, but actually I've only got the weekend because Monday is dress rehearsal. Um, and then Monday and Tuesday, I'm probably going to teach some lessons. So I'm not going to just have three days off where I can 
just play Brandenburg when it's time to play Brandenburg, although that would be great. Uh, and if you're doing Brandenburg for the first time, I highly recommend taking at least a little time off. Uh, orchestral players famously, uh, nobody in particular that I know, but uh, it's sort of infamous that a lot of orchestral players would ask for the entire month before this off uh, so that they would only do the rehearsal cycle that was Brandenburg in the entire month that was Brandenburg's time because it's so hard. Um, and I, I'm not, I, I, I don't fault them for that at all. I, I think it's a very scary thing to go up against, especially if it's your job, right, to play well. Uh, luckily for me, it's my job to teach well and to recruit students to ECU and uh, among other various uh, committees and things that I also need to do. But, um, but whether or not I play Brandenburg perfectly is not going to make or break my career. And uh, that's a nice thing because then I can, I, I can not worry too much about it. But, um, but yeah, so if you hear those stories about uh, tr for trombone players, sometimes it's uh, Bolero, right? They refuse it, they, like write it out of their contract or, or uh, you know, there's a bunch of famously difficult excerpts and pieces that people either won't play or require a month or two months or whatever of sub of getting somebody to sub for them, um, you know, it don't don't uh, sort of shake your head like oh well that's not no it's th this is scary stuff when you uh, are alone. Uh, the performance uh, Jay asks when is the performance? The performance is Wednesday night at I believe six forty five Eastern time. So that's going to be the twenty sixth of May. Um, I'm gonna make sure that it's live streamed one way or another, even if it's just my phone on a stand somewhere in the church. Uh, but it is otherwise a, a live performance of uh, something else I actually don't know. <laughs> it's, I've been worried enough about this that I don't, um, I believe it's a choir performance, uh, not the church choir, but a, a local um, uh, like sort of professional choir. Uh, but I, but don't quote me on that. Um, I'm sure it will be very good, and I will. St I'm going to stay and listen. It's not. It'll be nice to hear live music for a change. Um, although for everyone else, it'll still be live streamed. But they're actually allowing people to come to the performance, which has me both worried and excited. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a weird time right now, right? Because we're about in the state of North Carolina, we're about a 50% vaccinated. And, but being vaccinated doesn't mean you can't get sick and it doesn't mean that you are uh, not able to get other people sick. It just means that you probably won't die if you do get sick. And so uh, we're treating it kind of like this silver bullet. And uh, we're, if you're vaccinated, then you can basically do anything you want. And I'm not saying that that's not true or that the CDC's recommendations aren't uh, accurate. Uh, I am saying that there, there's a lot more to it, and the, the guidelines that they publish are really to try to control people's behavior um, so, that, so that we can all get along, right? So for, for uh, COVID stuff and music, um, you know, this is an indoor performance, but it's in an extremely large church in terms of the, the volume of air in there. Um, and that's a good sign. Uh, it's also not going to be extremely populated. So that's another good thing. And uh, the audience will all be wearing masks, I believe. Um, the musicians are completely spread out. Uh, we're using a six foot rule because everyone understands that, even though it really ought to be more like 12 or more. Um, but it's also a very live space. And so anyway. Um, yeah, so, so it's going to be a live performance, and we'll see how that goes. And um, hopefully nobody gets sick, and uh, hopefully the performance goes well. Uh, it's just it's, it's interesting to add another wrinkle to the things you can worry about with a performance. And uh, in some ways, that takes your mind off of the stuff you used to worry about, because uh, it doesn't seem like such a big deal if you miss a note in the Brandenburg, uh, as long as nobody gets sick at, because you had a performance. <laughs> So uh, that's pretty dark, uh, but you know, if you know me, hey, that's the this is the th these are the jokes, man. So uh, anyway, so let's get to it. We're gonna use, like I said, the Clark book. I'll just tell you what it is. We're not, I don't have it in front of me, but um, but we're not gonna start there. We're gonna start a little bit with uh, just getting warmed warm, right? We talk about this all the time. 
Uh, what do I do with my mouthpiece? There we go. Uh, we're going to play a little bit of bass trumpet mouthpiece. This is the thing that I do, and it just helps me get vibrations happening in this way and uh, a, a turnaround that's, that's wor workable, right? So, uh, and last time we did it for two minutes, so it's really just like feel warm. Uh, I am going to log everything today, and we are going to play with... I'll just make sure I know where A is so that I know where C is. Okay, so here we go. Um, I guess I could turn this down a little bit. Actually, no, the mouthpiece sounds better with it. So I'm trying to blow through the mouthpiece and not just to my lips, but I'm also trying to get my lips kind of, um, you know, just in the right spot, uh, feeling okay. Let's see, today is the 21st, uh, and it is, we're going to call this 3.15 p.m. Okay. far off we've gotten about a half step So it's not about getting it perfect, but it's 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 about getting it a little better than that, right? Uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble just keeping it low, which probably means that everything in my mouth positioning is too high, and that's uh, that is probably because I've been playing a lot of piccolo, and it does require sort of a higher positioning. But something about this set up that day felt really good. So we're trying to sort of see if doing the same things in the same order with the same goals in mind uh, can have the same effect. And then I'll just do less and less of it as I get closer to the gig. Yeah, my turnaround was bad, that's why. That's good. That's three and a half minutes with a little talking. So I'm just logging this down. I, I write everything down on my my sort of template here. So that's three and a half, right? Sorry, I'm sort of off to the side. I know that's probably not great content creation. Uh, but we're going to call that bass trumpet mouthpiece. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is actually that same mouthpiece on the F alto trumpet, very low trumpet, that uh, originally I just was kind of being cute. I thought, you know, the Brandenburg is written for F trumpet, so in it, technically you can play it on the low F trumpet with, a, with whatever, you know, mouthpiece you want to use, and you can do it without valves because that's, what, that's the length of the natural trumpet that you would have played it on. Um, <clears throat> it, I would never do that. That's a crazy, crazy thing to do. If you're going to do it on a natural trumpet, you may as well play a real Baroque natural trumpet, right? That is designed for that, that has 
usually uh, some holes drilled in the side for tuning and, um, and, and getting the, the right partials uh, locked in. You wouldn't play it, you would not play it on an alto trumpet that was designed as sort of like a, a between, in between for the uh, soprano, essentially B flat trumpet and the bass trumpet. So um, yeah, it, it's sort of a, a weird, uh, the, the alto trumpet, I mean, we're gonna play it anyway, I may as well get it out so I can talk, talk about it and you can see it. Uh, the alto trumpet, it, this is really, this, this is a Bach. And if you look at this next to a Bach cornet, this is essentially the design that they, they stole from themselves and just made, instead of a, a, a cornet though, where the, the bore gets continually larger, that's, what, that's the difference between a trumpet and a cornet. Uh, the, the cornet is wrapped tighter. So a lot of people will say, oh, the cornet's smaller, but it's not shorter, right? It, it's not shorter in overall tubing length. Um, so it's really not different. It's just, you, you can wrap a trumpet. There's pocket trumpets too that are still more compact, but they still have the same four and a half feet of tubing. So, um, but the cornet starts off small and gets bigger every step of the way, all the way through the instrument, at least as much as one can do that with, while still maintaining slides that move and things like that, right? The slide has to be parallel for it to move, but, um, but it can get bigger each valve and all the way until it gets to the bell, which obviously gets bigger on every instrument. Uh, a trumpet, by contrast, which this is, goes, starts off with a tapered lead pipe still. And then as soon as it gets to the end of the lead pipe, which is probably around here, just the normal B flat area, this pipe is the same size all the way through every valve, all the way until it gets to this bell right here. And then it gets bigger. Right, so that's what makes it a trumpet and not a cornet. But otherwise, the design of this instrument is identical to the B-flat cornet that uh, Bach made the same around the same time. This is an early Elkhart. So, um, so let's play it a little bit. That was a rest of about three and a half minutes. There's another thing we're going to do today that I'm I haven't done yet, and that is I'm writing down the rest now. Um, that is that we're Brandenburg has a very sort of nice structure of playing where you play basically five minutes and then you rest four minutes, not quite, and then you play for three more minutes. And so we're going to try to do that in cycle and then rest for about the entire length of the piece, um, which is what, uh, five, ten minutes, right? Oh, no, sorry, 11 minutes, 12 minutes. What did I say? Five, four, three, right? Four and three is, yeah, 12 minutes. I should just know that off the top of my head instead of trying to add it up. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna try that when we actually get into the playing, because um, I didn't really do that last time. I just kind of played for about three and a half minutes, and if we get tired after three and a half minutes, we're gonna stop. But I want to try to go for five, and then rest for four, and then play for three, and then rest for twelve, and then start it over again just so I get into that mode, that mindset, that physical, uh, that, I, that I have a physical sensation of where that endurance lies. So that's, that's something you might consider. Oh, we need to add another minute to <laughs> plus 1.5. All right, because I talk too much. Uh, so this is gonna also be out of tune, sorry about that. I'm just not very good. I'm sharp. I usually am so flat on this.
So I'm just kind of getting warmed up. I'm not, I'm playing dumb horn things because it's F, you know, I don't, I don't know. It sort of sounds right. Um, I, but I don't want to play anything too strenuous. I know that sound, the technical things sound strenuous, but I'm really just kind of not, I don't care if they come out or not. So just a little more of this. Let's see what I play. I played for four minutes last time. So I guess a little, a little, a little more. to try to stay in the key of C concert, which is G on F alto. Uh, that was about three minutes, we'll call it. Uh, because it just keeps my ear centered. Uh, and sorry, I'm writing things down and trying to talk. This is why I don't usually do my journal during the stream, but it's too important right now to not do. And for all I know, I'm just somebody's background noise while they do other work. So I'm just going to say gibberish and it'll be fine, right? Um, but this is actually important practice. And if somebody were preparing the Brandenburg for the first time, I, if, this, if this system works out, then I would want to be able to share it with them. So I'm not just doing it for, for the stream right now. But anyway, so... Uh, that's that's all we're going to do on the F alto, and the big reason for that is because the mouthpiece is so much different than the piccolo trumpet mouthpiece, which uh oh I'm not sure if I have in this room with me. That might that might have been an error. Well, while I rest here for a second, let me go find it, and I'll be right back. And then we're going to start off with uh, B flat trumpet Clark number one, and kind of go from there. Right. So, un momento. Okay, there we go. I did, in fact, leave it in the other room because uh, I practice in there more. There's a TV in there. Uh, all right, so we're not going to necessarily need the tuner anymore. I'm not as interested in if I'm in tune with a tuner. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm in tune with myself by my own sort of ear standard, and uh, I can trust that now. I, it's not that you shouldn't practice with a tuner and, and work that out and work on your ear that way, right? But we're also talking about diatonic intonation uh, versus uh, a sort of a chromatic or, or uh, like in tune with a piano or in tune with a tuner, right? That's, that's equal, it's not equal tempered either though. It, it's, um, it's what I just described, right? Uh, it's it's quite, quite literally equal, if that makes sense, a hundred cents per half step. And uh, that's not the way we're going to tune in Brandenburg because none of the instruments, ex well, the, uh, that's not true. The, the organ will be playing, I believe, some of the continuo and whatever, whatever plays the continuo most likely will not be able to change intonation on the fly. But based on whatever notes that continuo is playing, we can tune everything else in a just diatonic way. So, um, that's most likely what everybody's ears is, are, are uh, going to be going towards. So we don't want to we don't want to be too strict about that as we get closer. We do want it's nice to play with drones, but uh, since we're going to play arpeggios and right now just chromatic scales, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it. So 
All right, uh, that's a little longer than we played, so that's a good amount of time. Three and a half minutes versus the three that we played the alto trumpet. And I always err on the side of extra rest, so when I write something down, I'm also taking time to write it down, uh, and I'm not accounting for that time, right? It's only a little bit of time usually. Okay, so let's see, <laughs> see if I have my real mouthpiece or if I've left that in the other room as well. No, I do. Okay, so Clark number one is just chromatic scales. And I did this the other day because I wanted to work on my low range. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do low F sharp up to s around C for whatever it takes. And now we're going to try to go five minutes. Okay, so we've already burned one, but close enough. I'll, I'll reset it, but we won't count this time. There we go. Now we'll go for five. try to do whatever it takes to get down to those notes well and then I then I try to stabilize it you're also supposed to do as softly as possible and you're supposed to feel a little bit of tension as you go up and a little bit of relax as you go down so I used to not believe in but if you do it right you can feel it it's not right is not what it seems like though <laughs> fingers also get tired because they're really working so it's it's a good exercise but you got to pace yourself you can go slower if you want fingers are starting to get tired so I'm just going to do the tritone
So that was five minutes. And uh, let me let me push this down a little bit, just so my bell is actually in the frame. Now, uh, now I've done it. Now I've done it. Too much. You'd think that by now I'd have a setup that works, but it's because I move it. Anyway, so uh, that's that's. Oh, I have to restart the timer. That was five minutes. Now we're going to rest for four minutes. Let's see. That was B flat. Clark, one. And we did it for five minutes. I guess I could say, I like to say what I started on and what direction I went. So that way I can sort of, if I start low, then I know that that's what I did. Or if I started up high and went downward or whatever I did, I sort of, I have to have a little shorthand for that. But all right. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is Clark number two on the C trumpet. And so we're both moving upward in trumpet and we're moving upward in complexity. So if you're not familiar, that, so that was just chromatic scales, right? Um, I would, it, you could argue for the most complexity is the chromatic scale because it has all the notes, right? But um, in terms of a, a pattern of things, right? There is no pattern to chromatic. It's just half step, half step, half step, right? Um, so we're, we're upping the complexity of pattern, I guess you could say. And uh, so the next thing would be major scales, right? That's not too terribly difficult, but it is something uh, a, a bit more difficult than just the chromatic scale because every one of them now has a key instead of just it's all half steps again, but you start one higher or something, right? And we're going to switch to C trumpet just because we need to play the C trumpet a little bit. And I'll probably what, what I'll probably do as I go through the week is I'll play less and less of the bigger trumpets um, at least before I try before I play some Brandenburg. And I also I don't want to run Brandenburg every day. We talked about this in the the month ago Brandenburg practice, right? Um, excuse me for popping my knuckle. I um, I, I can't help it. But uh, the, the, I I don't want to just play over and over and over again the piece that I'm trying to get through. That's not the, the best strategy. The best strategy is to get my trumpet playing in the best shape it can be and then execute the piece with everybody else at the rehearsal uh, and at the concert, right? And not play too much any of those times. So I'll probably really check swing uh, both of the rehearsals even because I don't want to get, I don't want to overplay and need more time than I have to recover. Uh, and even if I have the time, it sometimes is hard to know, oh, I'm, I'm injured a little bit. Should I take a day off or should I, should I leave, should I play some that day, but risk re-injuring it, uh, but, but feel like I still have chops to play on, right? It's, it's a really tricky game. And when you get to the super high stuff that it, especially it's not just playing a high note, right? It's, it's playing five minutes of high stuff and then resting with no, without being able to play any notes and then coming back in and playing three more minutes of really high stuff. And some of that, at the beginning of that, is essentially alone. So that's one thing we do want to practice, is just the, the, the alone part of the beginning of the third movement. But anyway, so I said we'd rest for four minutes. We're coming up on that, so I don't want to miss it. And uh, yeah, we're just going to do Clark number one. And uh, let's see what I started on. I started on low F sharp again. So we can do that, right? It looks like I only got to D, but so now we're only going to play for three minutes when we when we hit this timer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and write four down now so I can be a little more precise with it. So, so here we go. This is going to be uh, a bunch of Clark number twos. I don't know if I know how to do the F sharp one, but I guess we'll figure it out. We can't go low enough. First, let's get into the C trumpet a little bit. I did last time too. I don't really like it. 
I'd have to look at it again and see. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so we got three minutes. Kind of uh, a little bit of, of a burn there, but I'd be okay if I felt like that at the end of Brandenburg. Now, that's not to say that's in any way a simulation of Brandenburg, except in time, right? And I'll get more rest in Brandenburg than I took either on the first Clark study or on the second Clark study. So that's really good. Now we've got a long rest though, and uh, that's going to be a very boring stream. So I'll talk a little bit about some things, but if anybody has a question or a comment or a subject that they would like to talk about or hear about or, or comment on, then I would love to have some uh, uh, conversational fodder here to, to fill up the time that I really do need to rest. So um, that was three minutes. And that was C, Trumpet, Clark, number two, and we did F sharp up to uh, almost E, we'll call it E, because we did one quick one, All right? Um, so yeah, so I've got my Brandenburg here. Let's make sure I have the right copy. That's uh, uh, when we actually start playing Brandenburg, we wanna make sure that what we wrote is the, uh, <laughs> sorry, that the copy that we have is the one we wrote everything into. Because uh, I have two of these, and uh, I, I just, you should have a backup copy, but don't mark in both of them, because then you should, yeah, you should copy your markings, of course, if it's a real backup. Um, one thing you can do, of course, is uh, just have one copy and maybe a blank copy just around. Uh, oh, there we go. This is just a piece of paper that is a printout of a... Oh, I remember. I was testing my printer. Well, rip that piece of paper. Anyway. Uh, then And then go copy your music right before you go to the gig. And then you'll have an extra copy with your markings in it. And you can also keep that copy for yourself so that you have your own markings. I used to scan my music at the dress rehearsal, in between the dress rehearsal and the concert for orchestra stuff. Uh, I, it, it was a little tacky of me, to be honest, but I would put my music on the stand and then I'd get my phone out and I would 
scan, you know, with the scanning app, all the pages of all the music, because of course I'd forgotten to do that before I got there. And, uh, but I wanted to have all my markings because uh, what I mark in my parts essentially boils down to uh, what the members of the chord that I'm playing are. So in, in other words, if I have a major third and I need to bring that down, I just write a three above it or th three RD, right? Um, fifth, fifths I write in R is for root, a usually a lowercase r. Um, uppercase r sometimes looks like other stuff, so lowercase r it is. And uh, so those are all important things that aren't going to change from time to time that I play it. Um, of course, I write down any other stuff that is editorial from the conductor because it may be something that comes up again with even a different conductor. A lot of conductors slow down in the same places in the same pieces or whatever, right? So that's at least helpful to know that that might happen there. And you never take your anything that's written in pencil, you ignore the first time you play it again because you don't, first of all, you might have a different interpretation if it's your own pencil markings, but if you're playing with a different orchestra with a different conductor, you're not going to, you're probably not going to do any of that stuff. Uh, and then when you do, and it's already marked in, you can just say, oh, okay, great, that one's good. I'll do that one. And uh, usually you're playing from a brand new part anyway, so it's really about putting in the stuff that you think will happen. And uh, so I always have my extra backup part there. Um, if, if you are one of my students who was at a, uh, a gig recently, we played Rudder Gloria. And I, I had played Rudder Gloria before, and I happened to have my third trumpet part. So I gave the third trumpet player uh, my part from the last time I did it and said, here. Uh, the biggest thing that I copy almost every time is the multi-measure rests. Um, if it says anything above like three or four, something probably happens in that rest that is obvious, that's an arrival that happens usually on the downbeat of a measure, right? And so I divide back up my multi-measure rests into smaller rests that have the cues in them, which is essentially making my single line part into a mini, a mini score, um, kind of a conductor's score, if you will. That way I don't have to count the rests. Uh, and if I do, which I still do, I don't get it wrong. If you count, if you're thinking like sort of 19, 20, 21, wow, that oboe really sounds nice. Wait, am I on 18, 19, 20, 20, you know, you can get off by a hand uh, uh, which is then by five, right? You can get off by an order of, uh, of 10, right? You can think you're like, am I on 28 or 38, right? Uh, you can just get off, but you can just not move your fingers and then look down and go, I guess I'm on 13, 14, right? And now you're off by one. So, and it's, it, it's it, obviously you need to know the piece and that way you know orally where to breathe and come in, right? But sometimes it's tricky, and the, you'll have different entrances that sound almost the same but are slightly different each time. So uh, it's really nice to just be able to say, and now the oboe comes in. And the oboe does come in where you thought. And sometimes other people make mistakes too. Let's say the oboe doesn't come in, but they were supposed to, right? Well, that's okay because now the violas come in, and they're always, at least some of them are going to come in, right? Um, so it's, it's really helpful to... to first of all, do that while you're in the first rehearsal or second rehearsal or while you're just listening, right, uh, at home to your pieces, whatever you're playing. But then it's nice to have that again because otherwise you have to do it every time and it's very time consuming. You should listen to the piece anyway, but it's nice to just be able to listen and not worry, right, uh, uh, over like multi-measure rest because then you're not, as soon as you start marking something, you stop listening until you finish that marking, right? Uh, at least if you're like me. I know that there are people out there who can do two things at once, but I'm not one of those people. So I'm lucky that I can uh, play play trumpet and read music at the same time. Although, if you watch my stream, I'm trying to avoid doing that as much as possible anyway. So uh, we're only at about seven minutes now, which means we've got some time still if anybody, uh, if anybody wants to say or do anything. Um, so anyway, we have the right Brandenburg. Uh, let's clean up a little bit here, too. I wish I could show you this more uh, adequately, but we probably don't need our how to play scales uh, or ways to play scales thing. We'll uh, get rid of... Uh, now, last week, I think I said that I was going to play the Aaron Harris and the Vern Reynolds etudes for you. 
uh, two things happened. One is that I realized how just how close Brandenburg was, and I decided that just it would be hubris to uh, to try to you know do all of that. But um, but also uh, I just didn't have time to practice the etudes. I practiced trumpet every day. But I never got to the etudes each day. It just, it just didn't happen. And uh, while that is regretful, it is something you can certainly learn from. Um, when you're in school, that's just that's not acceptable, right? You can't just not get to your lesson material. But over the summer, uh, if you're working on your trumpet playing, that's okay to not get to literature uh, for a week or two, right? And especially if you have something that you're actually playing. If you have a concert, some people... Uh, who might who who could be watching this are still in in public school right they're still in the public school system and you probably still have your final concert to go right so um, I'm trying to trying to be organized and talk and watch the time at the same time so but that then you don't need to play a lot of literature every day you've probably got six or seven pieces on your on your program that you're gonna play like this week or next week or whenever your final concert is. So that's enough. That's that's literature, right? That then you're. I, I, it's nice to have an etude or two, but if you're getting better at trumpet, you know, working on scales, arpe, uh, yeah, scales, arpeggios, uh, transposition, sight reading, high range, flexibility, every day, right? All that stuff every day. Well, then if you have five or six pieces that you're rehearsing, you know, two or three times a week, uh, then that's fine. Oh, I get a question. Yes, thank goodness. Have you ever practiced this part like jazz? Um, I did not practice this part like jazz. And uh, what, what Michael's referring to is I will sometimes have him or other students of mine play something like uh, in a completely wrong style and in a jazz style specifically. And the reason that I do that is because it gets you, it gets you to think of the line better. It gets you to think of the sound of the line better, right? It's no, it's no longer like right it's not we're not thinking of it that same way where it has to be pristine and perfect we're thinking just like oh yeah where's the music going what's what how does this sound right how do i want to play and it's also silly and it gets it gets you out of your own sort of head about uh something right about a piece oh no you know what i'm looking at the other I think I can't tell which one's the copy. So Michael, uh, I yeah, I, I this must be the one that I used because I wrote oboe solo and recorder and violin in it. So yeah, this is the one we need to use, and not the other one. Yeah, because this has your extended um, your the parts that you're playing in it. So this is the backup copy which we will now put in the drawer. Gone forever. Okay, so we're, we're just about uh, 11 minutes. Uh, one more minute to go, and we're gonna come back with, oh, piccolo Clark number two. So we are in fact gonna play piccolo trumpet next. Um, and we'll go, we're gonna go in and out of piccolo because we don't wanna get tired of pic piccolo. We wanna actually feel like when we pick up the piccolo, it's fresh and easy, right? But anyway, um, so yeah, so, so the answer is no, Michael. I have not played this like jazz, and the reason is because um, it's not feeling stuck to me. I, I'm, I'm always trying to think of the other parts, and so I'm, I'm interacting with them, and I also try really hard not to care if I miss a note. That's, that's easier said than done. But playing it in a, in a jazz style, for instance, isn't really going to help me uh, to do that. Uh, I'm still going to worry about the same notes, basically, in the same places. Uh, but what we're doing today is giving me some of the skills to get to where you're talking, where, to where that exercise would get you. Uh, and while the jazz one is more fun, uh, this is a little more practical. And, well, quite frankly, something that everybody is willing to do. And so uh, I often will say that if you want to be, if you want to win an audition, you have to do everything that everyone else is willing to do and uh, everything, at least a few things that no one else is willing to do that sets you apart, right? So doing things like that, like playing playing Brandenburg in a jazz style, if it helps you, that might set you apart from everybody else. But 
Today we're just doing what everybody probably would be willing to do, which is play some Clarks on their piccolo trumpet. So here we go, we're playing Clark number two, and last time I did D up to G. So let's do C, let's start on C, that's easier. I'm gonna turn this down somewhat. I'm just not going to use it. I hate when people don't use their slides, but I'm waiting to clean this horn so that it's clean when I like I don't I don't have to clean it 8 times between now and then. So anyway, Trying to keep my my soft palate more open. get that anchor tongue position but not married to it let's see that's only three and a half if I can do it, but we don't want to push it here. So that was five minutes also, and uh, didn't quite get the G at the end, kind of started fracking things a little bit, but again, we tried to play almost constantly for those five minutes, and you do play pretty constantly in the first moon of the Brandenburg, but I won't because I've got Michael, thank you Michael, and um, we also have some rest, right? There's, uh, there's little one rests and half measure rests all over the place, 
and uh, there's all the parts that, that Michael's playing for me, about a bar or two or three or four at a time. And then there are uh, otherwise just, there's one big, really big long six measure rest basically. And right in the middle though, so that's good. And then the rest, you just gotta make it, right? So anyway, um, now uh, Brandenburg, oh, I didn't start it again, shoot. Uh, Brandenburg is also gonna be, we'll, only, we'll do three minutes here. Uh, let me write down what I did, five minutes. Piccolo, B flat, Clark, number two. Uh, where do we start? C up to B flat, I guess. Yeah, pretty good. So now while that's tiring, this is my practice today, right? I'm practicing for Brandenburg until Brandenburg happens. I'm not going to try. It's okay to freeze your... Um, pro uh, pro uh, pro progress for a couple of days, right? Uh, not everybody does this. I don't think that, um, I don't think my dad does this in particular. Uh, uh, he can, if he's not on the stream today because he's actually down in North Carolina, only about three hours, three and a half hours away from me. So I'm going to go see him tomorrow. Uh, the, uh, the solo competition for national trumpet competition is happening there. Uh, the, the finalists are live for some reason. And the judges are then therefore also live for some reason. And um, that is not necessarily that they don't have a good reason. I'm not trying to say that, I, but I, I, I'm cautious is all about anybody deciding to do something live that, um, that otherwise maybe they could just skip it just this once or I guess twice in a row uh, and do it online, right? But, but it, it, it I know everybody wants things to get back to normal, so I'll, I'll try to stop making color commentary on the, the state of everyone else's exhaustion over the pandemic and my eye rolling about it, because um, it's just not going to get better. And uh, it's not about, it, that this, this space is about trumpet, um, but it, it's hard to, to, to not let those things come up because they're, you, you know, that you don't do this stuff in a, in a vacuum. Um, but for the purposes of this, I guess we sort of are in some sort of vacuum, a Brandenburg vacuum. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, we're going to have to play trumpet again soon. And uh, when we do, it's going to be D trumpet and Clark number three. So let's get that ready uh, while I say, um, yeah, not everybody puts their, their practice basically on hold when they're about to play something like a recital or something really hard. Uh, but I, I find that it's, it's helpful to not tr struggle to main, like to, to get better physically at like high range or something every day as I'm coming up to a big performance, I just, I, I, I maintain, I, I do touch everything a little bit, right? I do my high range exercises. Um, I just don't do them to the extreme and uh, I don't spend five minutes on them. I spend, uh, you know, one minute on them. So anyway, that was three minutes and I don't feel super rested. So, uh, we're calling that four minutes, though, because I didn't start the timer right away. So, okay, so now Clark number three. What did I start last time? I started on low G. That's, that makes sense to me. So this is my D trumpet. This is my small bore, 40, 402 bore uh, Mount, Mount Vernon, is it? Yeah, Mount Vernon D trumpet. They're very out of tune little awful things, but they are small bore, and that's going to do some things for me. So, uh, <laughs> It's always weird to start on D2. Great sounding, but we'll keep going and see if we can sound better.
double time at the end just because I like it. Feel the muscles that are that are burning. Make sure they're working. So that was three minutes. Uh, that one actually felt good. It felt better to play for three minutes on, on the lower trumpet. Uh, so that means a couple of things. One is, of course, it's lower. So, of course it feels better. It wasn't as high. And uh, I wasn't using as much pressure. But it also means that the muscles that I feel now are, this is what I was trying to say in between little takes and I realized I needed to keep playing. Um, the muscles that I feel, I feel muscles up here and down here that are, as I start to get tired, but try to keep playing uh, those kinds of things and keep the response happening, I'm, I'm feeling those muscles engage and start to burn a little bit. And uh, th that means a couple of things. One is that they probably weren't engaged at the beginning, and now I'm finding a need to engage them to keep things working. So it probably means I need to engage them at least a little from the very from the get go, right? Uh, and then at the same time, I I need to make sure that they are strong and not worn out because they are clearly something that I need to be able to use, right? So there's sort of two sides to it. I I want to work them out now and um, work towards having stronger muscles, right? So I am sort of growing still in that way. And um, that way on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I can be strong for those rehearsals and concert. Uh, but I don't want to be worn out because I worked out so hard. And these muscles are small, so you, as long as you make sure you, you have adequate rest during the day, like the each day, right, you can kind of work them every day. And then the day that you have the concert or whatever, you just don't really work them at all except to get them limber and then they'll work just fine and you can kind of run the meter and, um, but it, it's better if you can get them in a position where you don't have to run the meter on your, you're not running the meter on your sort of ability to, to keep things, uh, to, to, to do things. You're, you're running the meter on your ability to keep things in a single position that does everything for you, right? And uh, that, you're, still, you're always gonna run the meter. There's always some stamina happening, but it's better if that stamina happens at an even rate over time instead of like, well, I have to do this one hard thing and it really takes it out of me. That's, that's less desirable, even though that is something that still happens and is going to happen in Brandenburg, right? So, um, all right. So how long are we resting this time? Well, guess what? That was another Brandenburg uh, that we just pretended to play. Uh, and that one actually had piccolo in it and D trumpet, which is what they used to play stuff like this on god forbid you try to play brandenburg on on d in uh, on a d trumpet let's see what that would even be um well if this is an f right then i would transpose it up a minor third i don't think anybody's ever done that maybe probably probably play it on c trumpet but they probably just didn't play it at all very much until they ha we had a piccolo trumpet to play, which uh, was the, basically the beginning of the, the 20th century. Honestly, the, not not the early East, not not the very beginning either, right? We were still this this trump. Oh, it's not here. The the French besson that I play in half my videos that wasn't that was barely invented by the turn of the century. Um, so we're talking years and years and years after that we finally get the D trumpet. Um, 
because it's easier to play mostly Bach, right? Because most stuff is in the key of D, so you'd have a lot of high Cs, which still is not hard. But that's what the that small D trumpet that I played earlier, that's what that's for. Um, and they kept making them. And it wasn't until the middle of the, uh, the 1900s, middle of the 20th century, that we had real piccolo trumpets to play that could really play this stuff. So, um, yeah, that's... That's uh, that's that's the how it is. Uh, okay, so so like I said, oh, we ha we didn't write down our three minutes three minutes of D trumpet. Last time, what did I do? Oh, I did five minutes on D trumpet last time. I could have done more. Uh, Clark number three, and we did what it's what we did last time. Uh, what was G up to? I don't know what we got up to. E flat maybe. I think probably about E flat. No, B flat. We got to B flat, right? I did that one faster. So, um, so it's this has been, been about five minute rest. Um, I am sort of close to where I was last time. So l last time I did D trumpet and then piccolo again, for actually quite a long time on Clark number three. So maybe those are easier uh, to do. And then I waited a long time and did uh, just a little bit of Clark number four on the piccolo. And I, that one really, that one's really hard. So what I think we're going to do is flip flop Clark number four and number three on piccolo. Uh, instead of doing more Clark three right away, we're going to do Clark four because that might take a little more endurance out of me. And that is going to be a better analog. Plus, uh, Brandenburg is kind of like Clark two and three, two and four combined, right? Uh, there's no minor, but uh, a section that we play the, the, you know, that same way. But um, well, I guess there is actually. But at, at any rate, um, we, uh, uh, if you think about how, like what you're going to play in the Brandenburg, it's scales, sometimes in third patterns or sometimes just up and down usually just up and down, to be honest, and, uh, and arpeggios, right? Dun, 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 dun. That's it. That's, that's, the, that's the whole thing that you're going to play. Now, there are some octaves and uh, some things that are sort of like extra from arpeggios, right? But that's still, that's the fifth and the octave of an arpeggio, right? So if you played your arpeggios in all their different configurations, then you'd end up with all of that stuff, right? Um, now, the Clark book doesn't do that, but that's why we have the abstract version from last time. So uh, let's see. That's been seven minutes. We're going to rest the whole 12 because uh, it's good to rest the amount that you play. I'm going to drink water, too. I haven't done that this whole time. Mm. That really can... You have to be careful with if it's very cold water. It reduces swelling, which is good, right? You feel better faster, and you don't let your lip doesn't feel as irritated uh, because you don't let the inflammation go on as long. But it also means that sometimes if you're going to play some more, you can come back and play too soon, and then you can flatten your lip trying to play something that it doesn't feel bad yet, but you're actually you, it's just numb because the water was too cold. So this is just lukewarm water. This is like room temperature water, which I know probably is gross to most of you, but um, what can I say? Uh, warm, cold, and medium temperature water all hydrates you the same amount, approximately. Uh, if anything, warm water is probably getting into your system a little faster and kind of, uh, but it promotes swelling which of course promotes, it promotes circulation, which promotes swelling. So we don't want to drink hot water either, uh, unless we're done with our day. Uh, so cold water and hot water, both fine after you're done playing, but you want sort of slight, maybe slightly cold water, uh, tap, tap, th this is just tap water actually. Um, it's just very hot out today. And so the tap isn't that cold, but um, yeah, I believe it's 88 degrees here uh, and about, 35% humidity. Um, it's a hot day in, in North Carolina. So we're just sitting here waiting. Uh, again, if anybody has a question, I'd 
be happy to answer it. I know this isn't the best stream, but the best part about a, a stream that you watch later is that you can fast forward through this part and just wait until you see me holding a trumpet again and I'm probably about to play, right? So um, I would normally be listening during this time also if I was just practicing by myself. I, I, if I need a concentration, this hasn't cost a lot of concentration, right? We've just been playing scales and arpeggios and patterns that I know. And like I said, I, I keep looking down here like you can see it, but just Brandenburg is on the stand in front of me, not the Clark book, right? So I'm not reading notes. I did have to sort of think a little bit about some of the some of the funny fingerings uh, in, in some of the bad keys and just uh, you could hear me stumble over them. And so I, I had to sort of turn that up. But uh, oh, yeah, we kept my... Uh, my only moderator says we can set up Twitch interactive games for the longer breaks. I am all about it. We also then need um, participants for those games. <laughs> so um, that may not work as well as setting it up is uh, easy. But yes, we should. That would be great. Um, I will also then have to plan my sessions, though. And uh, so we'll have to see because I don't, I don't like to plan. That would make this work instead of well it's not it's not not work but if i don't plan then it's something that i was going to do anyway that now i'm just like opening up this window and now you're here and and i then i also have to explain myself to me, for myself basically because i don't i don't know if anybody's actually listening so um so yes yeah, so as long as it's not more work uh where i have to actually plan for stuff then good let's do it Okay, uh, I'm just looking through Brandenburg now. And like I said, we have, uh, we have a plan. We're going to do Clark number four on Piccolo. And uh, then we're going to go to uh, Clark, back to Clark number three on Piccolo. And we're going to do the low ones because the purpose of our final... So we've already done pretend Brandenburg basically one time. Now, it wasn't exactly because the one time we did... Uh, B flat trumpet and then C trumpet. Is that right? No. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that's the old one. That's why I'm confused. Have I been marking on the right one? Yeah. Okay, I'm good. So uh, I'll, I'll show it to you because that's much better. Um, so here we are. Uh, I c you probably can't read this. But basically, we started with B flat, right? And then rested four and then three minutes of C trumpet. Then we rested 12, which is what we're doing now. Then we had five minutes of piccolo in B flat, four minutes off, and three minutes of D trumpet. So that's two sort of mock Brandenburgs on the wrong trumpets. So this one is going to be the only mock Brandenburg on all on piccolo, and it's when I'm tired. So uh, I should understand the stamina better. Oh, that's right on 12. I should understand the stamina better. And... Uh, and be able to predict it. But I'm also, again, I'm not going to overdo it. I'm saying that as much for me as for those of you who are listening, because if I overdo it, I'm too, I'm cl and this is the red zone now, where if I, if I just go and go to play Brandenburg, or I, I try to get all the way to that five minute mark, right? Um, and I, crush my lip in some funny way, I might not have the time to recover by the time I need to play this. And the other part of it is, it's not a pride thing, but um, I have to play those rehearsals too, right? And if I fold on the rehearsals, it doesn't help everybody be confident about the performance. And that, that doesn't seem fair, right? I didn't choose to rehearse it twice before. I would, I would prefer not to rehearse it ever again until the concert. <laughs> Because uh, then I can do whatever I need to do both of those days, right? Plus the lessons I'm going to teach and whatever. But um, since I can't do that because we have those rehearsals, I'm going to need to play some something in those rehearsals. And it's fine to take things down an octave. It's fine to lay out. It's fine to have Michael play more, maybe. Um, whatever I need to do. But, but what I can't do is just completely fold on it, right? I just like hack through it and just try to play and not be able to do it because then people are going to worry. And I also can't just not play a lot. I can't really lay out a lot because then people think like, well, I, but I need to hear your part. I need to know how to interact with you. And so you can, 
sometimes people talk about bringing a B flat trumpet. Uh, I will have one, but um, to play it all down an octave, that's that's a scary thing too because now you're not really set up the way that you're gonna be, and so you're not practicing the Brandenburg when you're practicing the Brandenburg. And uh, I I prefer to just do it, but safely on the piccolo. So that's what we're about to do. So we said Clark number four now, right? I just started my timer again. That was probably 15 minutes of rest, but we'll call it 12. Um, let's see, where do we want to start on this? Let's start on D. they all repeat I might repeat some of them but Sound, I'm feeling a little bit like I know how to blow just right, and I'm not taxing myself, but I'm not I'm not using the muscles that I talked about before. So that's that's my new goal, and also I have a sticky valve. Great. are long that's why they they're so exhausting let's see if we can do that high f one second to put some valve oil on this because when your valves stick you start to hesitate and when you hesitate you don't play the right way and your lips do bad things and we just even if I'm taking time I shouldn't right now it's better to do that than to bust my lip like I said and I'm, I, it sounds like I'm overreacting if you if you play trumpet you might think ah, don't worry about it, Gabriel just play yeah well I'm I, what can I say I'm careful <clears throat> All right, here we go again. Trying to engage those muscles and use the air well, right? Sort of, I try to think about it being like soft and small and easy. starting to get swollen. I got half a, half a minute left. OK. 
Okay, that was five minutes-ish. I cut it a little early. Uh, and I did take a little too much rest in the middle. Oh, my dad is eating grouper, it says on my screen. The fish, I assume. I don't know what else it would be. Uh, here we go. We start the timer. Uh, five. And that was Piccolo. Clark. Number four. And we did D up to G. Not bad, actually. What did we do last time? Oh, well, last time we did uh, C up to G, but I think I did, I don't think I did the repeat almost ever that time. And I did it a little slower. So we played actually more notes and um, that's a little more realistic. That's what the, this is what the first movement's gonna feel like to me. And this is what the second, uh, right now we're in the middle of the second movement, right, in time. And we're not allowed to play. We're not allowed to do anything we, except maybe drink a little bit of water. But we're also on stage. So we can't do anything really, you know, wild. Can't, can't, um, I had a student recently uh, play a, a performance. And in the middle of the performance, just uh, start, start getting tired and just put their horn down and went... I don't think so. That's not a good sound to make during your performances, right? Uh, especially if there's any microphones nearby, everyone is going to hear you. And I don't think that uh, that's what Bach wrote or whatever, right? So, so just be cognizant of that. If that's a thing that you do a lot in your, in your practice, um, don't, right? Uh, it, it does, it feels better. It feel it, what you're doing is causing some vibration, which is causing some circulation, which is going to cause some swelling though, right? And now we're back in that weird zone of like, if it swells up too much, then I press more and it still doesn't really work. And then I press harder still. And now I'm causing more trauma, which is causing more swelling which is gonna exacerbate the problem. That's when I should have stopped 10 minutes ago, right? And um, that's one of the things that's hard about practicing this way is that you feel obligated to play the whole five minutes or the whole three minutes. Um, and resting the whole four minutes in the middle is easy, right? I just look at the clock every once in a while. It always feels like it's going too fast, but, uh, but then it slows down again when I start playing, right? And, but we feel obligated to try to make it. And uh, that's not, the recommended way to do this, right? I've been working on this for a month now, so I am able to make it just barely, but uh, that, and that was engineered. I wasn't making it. That was my point from before, my numbers before, the lower horns had more time and the higher horns had less time because I simply wasn't capable. And that was only five days ago, right? Um, I've been working my way up over time and uh, I'm happy to be where I wanna be just kind of in the nick of time. I don't, if I got there too soon, then I might slack off, uh, which is just me. I just know myself and that's not a good characteristic to have, but I, you know, it's also very human to uh, not be perfect. So, uh, and, I, and I'm far from it. Ask anybody who knows me. But, um, but anyway, yeah, uh, that, that we're working our way towards something. So if you're, if you're practicing a piece like this and you decide, yeah, I'm gonna play and then rest and then play the same amount of times, right? Okay, that's the time you play, but don't play the whole time, right? That's the time in which you work on the first movement on and off with some rest and that you make sure that you don't hurt yourself. Oh, if you do wanna play straight like we're doing today with Clarks and stuff, then um, play until you feel like until you feel that extreme fatigue that means stop now, right? And then mark where that is and how much, like maybe maybe you're trying to play for five minutes, you only got to three. Okay, so now you're gonna rest for two more minutes while you write down that you only got to three. And, right, then and then you're gonna still rest the entire four minutes or whatever it is for the, for the time you normally would rest. Okay, so here we go. See, I just did it. It's because I did it before. It does really feel good to do. All right. So now here we go on Clark's, Clark threes, and I rested an extra half minute. I'm sorry. 
Uh, what do we start on? C. Oh, boy. C, okay. Oh, no, that was... Yeah, no, it's still C. Valve's going, ruining my whole plan, which just goes to show you, you got to clean these horns. Uh, I've been waiting, I, like I said earlier, to clean it closer to the gig, but it looks like I'm just going to have to clean it this weekend, and then again right before the gig. It's okay. I can hear the tritone, but it just I keep wanting to do it off the A flat or off the off the note before the 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 tritone instead. I don't, I don't know why. I'm probably losing my concentration after an hour. Carb needs clean. That's right. Uh, Try to maintain this. Just give ourselves a second. We'll try. We'll try once. We'll try our hand once at the very ending. So. Oh. Uh, see, it's. Yes. All right. Oh boy. <laughs> that's, that's not not great. All right. I don't actually play that part anymore. Thanks, Michael. Well, we missed the high G. But I didn't force it out either, and my lip doesn't hurt as a result of that, so I call it a win for now. Uh, if I'd missed the last high G like I did the first time I played this, uh, I'd prefer to boff it like that instead of crack it like I did on that performance. So, um, yeah, and, and uh, we'll, we'll have to do some playthroughs. Um, I'll probably, this is my plan for tomorrow, and I will try to stream all of this. I don't know if I can because uh, of my sort of time constraints and driving around town. Uh, by town, I mean the state of North Carolina. But uh, I need to warm up in the morning, so I'm going to do a, a solid normal warm up. Not this. Uh, oh, oh, I should be, oh, I'm, I'm done now. Right, that's, that's it. That was my, it's actually four minutes of Piccolo Clark. Number three, and what did we do? D up to G, I think. Now I can't remember. I'm gonna say D up to G, because that's what we did last time. Uh, okay, so 
Uh, but tomorrow I'm going to do my normal routine warm up in the very early morning, and then I'm going to drive out to Greensboro to visit with my dad. And um, I'll spend the day out there with him, uh, but then I'll come back at night, and I will obviously be um, trumpet rested. I won't be physically or mentally rested because I will have been driving around all day, but I won't have played trumpet in a while, and so I'm going to do an extremely short warm up on the piccolo trumpet, and then I'm going to try uh, running Brandenburg. And uh, we do need to do that a little bit, not a lot, and we don't need to be upset if we don't make it. Uh, we need to work on the parts that preceded the parts that we fold on. So more on that if you watch those streams. But the idea, if you don't have time to, or you just uh, can't find them, or I maybe I don't put them up because I forgot or ran out of time, is that uh, when you fold on a part, it's not that specific part probably that is, I mean, it, that maybe that part's just literally too hard for you, in which case there's no solution. You're going to fold. Um, so just plan, plan to fold, right? That part isn't going to go well, but make the rest of it go great. Focus on that. Uh, and it sounds nihilistic, but for the time being, that might be true, right? And that's okay. That doesn't mean you shouldn't play the piece just because you miss one note or one lick. On the other hand, uh, if you know you can play it, but you don't every time, it's whatever happens before that that's affecting it. And it might be way before that. It might be how you play the whole first movement that makes the third movement just your, your lips swell up for four minutes because you did so much damage to them for the first five minutes of the piece that you can't play the last three minutes of the piece, right? Um, and so then you need to work on how efficient you are and how much damage you are you trying not, trying not to do so much damage for the first movement. And that will make the third movement better. But you can only know that by doing real run-throughs that you you really put yourself under pressure for, and um, and time out. You know, maybe even with a recording. Sometimes I'll play if I can. I'll play along with a recording that I trust that I that I think is close. Um, in my case, I I don't have a recording that will go the tempos that we are going to go. The third movement's going to be rather slow, unfortunately, for where I would like it. But the first movement actually can be pretty fast, and so hopefully we can keep that happening and uh we didn't do the fourth the fourth movement the four movement four minute second movement uh in order so i don't i'm i will get to know what that feels like and sounds like it might be six minutes if we go really slow right that's that's still that's only 30 percent slower if i'm nope something like that it's not 50 percent slower because that would be twice as long so what you do the math um, anyway, but uh, yeah, we'll see how long that actually is. I won't have any time to do anything about it by the time I find out. That's why we're practicing the way we are. Uh, if I had to guess, it'll be uh, probably longer than uh, four minutes. So we'll get a little extra rest. And I'm not having the problem where I, I put the horn back on my face and it doesn't work. I'm having the problem where I played it too long and it stops working. So the more rest, the better. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so that, that we're going to do a run through hopefully tomorrow night, and then on Sunday, I will. That will be my day to work. That's going to be all the work I'm going to do on Brandenburg is going to happen on Sunday, and then on Monday and Tuesday, it's just going to be flat out. Got to get ready for rehearsal. Got to make it through rehearsal. Got to not hurt myself during rehearsal. Got to do whatever repair, uh, repair the damage after rehearsal if need be, which is a slippery slope, but I think I can do it. And, um, and I'll clue you guys in for all of it. I will try to stream every single day whenever the action is happening. And uh, I'm largely not as in control of that as maybe I would otherwise like to be if I in an ideal scenario. But, um, but that's, that's, I think, more interesting anyway. So, uh, yeah, come, come back on. Watch your Twitch. Uh, watch your, your YouTube notifications. Turn them on. Do the bell or whatever. I don't know what people do. But do all of that stuff so that you can... Uh, tune in even if you're at work or you're just like on a jog or maybe you're practicing and you need a break Because um, they'll, they'll be shorter shorter things not these two-hour uh, master class type things, but more like here's okay. I had to do this. So here here it is All right. Um, so yeah, uh, wish me good luck and uh, keep me company for the next five days as we get ready for Brandenburg and uh, Thanks for being here today with me and I will see you tomorrow